Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to share with you some tips on how to set up Chrome to be more productive. I use Chrome, it's the main browser I use. I do have Firefox as a backup, but I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time I'm in Chrome. I've been using Chrome obviously for many years, like most of you, but since I spent so much time in front of the computer, I put in a lot of effort to try to optimize my experience within Chrome and I've come up with a lot of tips over the years on how to get maximum uh, value out of it and just to stay more organized and be more productive in general. So over here I've got a list that I want to get through in this video. Um, so I'm going to use this as kind of a reference. So the first thing that I've done in Chrome, which I highly recommend, is to take advantage of the bookmarks feature. Um, all browsers have bookmarks, um, but as I'll show you shortly, I've done quite a few different things to really maximize this feature. So if you're not familiar with the bookmarks bar, I'm talking about this bar over here. Um, if you don't see it on your side, it might just be hidden. So what you need to do is hold down the control shift. Uh, just you need to hold down control, the shift key, and then the B key, and that will make it appear. The next thing that's um, kind of cool with uh, the Chrome bookmarks bar is let's just say I want to bookmark a page. So if I'm on, you know, say I'm on this page and I click on this little star, it's going to add it to my bookmarks bar by default. I can obviously move, click on this button and change the location, but by default, it's going to send it to the bookmarks bar. But notice what happens. By default, it takes the actual title of the web page and puts that as the name. Okay, as you can see this, but you should know you don't have to have a name for the bookmark. So if you go ahead and you delete the name and you click done, notice what's going to happen. So over, it's been, it's edited over here and right now it says YouTube. But if I remove this and I just click done, it's going to remove the name. Now, why is this a nice trick? Because the name actually takes up space. So the bookmarks bar has limited space. And if you're like me and, and there's a lot of different websites you're visiting that you want to add to the bookmarks bar, you want to kind of condense it by removing the actual title that it tries to add. So if you look over here in my bookmarks bar, I've got Asana, I've got Notion, I've got Toggle, Google Calendar, etc. And for all of these, I know the icons. So when I see this icon, I know it's a Sana, right? I see this, I know it's Notion. So I don't actually need the names. So that's the kind of the first tip is to save space, just remove the name and keep the icon. Now, the next thing is, this is pretty self-explanatory, but you know, a lot of people I've, I've spoken to don't really do this, but you can create folders very easily in the bookmarks bar. As you can see here, I've got a set of icons of sites that I visit, you know, daily. And then I've got folders for things which I want to have quick access to, but don't necessarily visit daily. Um, to create a folder is very easy. You can just right click and you have your add folder. And if you click on other bookmarks on the right hand side, you can also structure uh, the folders however you want. The other nice thing is that you can have subfolders. So over here, for example, I've got Project BI, which is my um, website, my blog, um, and I have a subfolder general with all kinds of links to different things, right? I then have clients, um, different projects I'm working on, a list of affiliate sites, so I can go in and check if I've made any affiliate income, etc. The last little tip regarding um, the bookmarks bar is a really nice little thing I found. I can't remember where I, I got this idea, but basically, I found this site, which if I just hover over this, you'll see the URL and I'll also put in the description below. But basically this is a way to you bookmarking this page, but the title of the page is essentially just this ampersand um, uh, um, symbol. And this way you can actually create sections within the bookmarks bar. This little hack, you can't really do this with uh, the bookmarks bar on its own, but this is kind of the best way I found. So just for, you know, visually, I can kind of separate different areas, uh, different categories of things. Not a big deal, but it does kind of help the eye a bit. So, um, 
yeah, if you want that, just visit that website and just bookmark the page. And then you can use this and just keep on bookmarking it. So I have it bookmarked multiple times each time I need a, a divider. So that's kind of the bookmarks bar. The next big kind of piece of this is um, extensions, Chrome extensions. So I'm going to cover four different Chrome extensions that I have um, set up um, in my Chrome, which, which are really, really helpful for productivity. So the first one is the Newsfeed Eradicator for Facebook. So if I jump into my Facebook account, you'll notice something interesting here. I don't have the Newsfeed. So I can scroll down here and I don't see anything. What's actually happened is this Chrome extension called Newsfeed Eradicator has actually eradicated the feed, as the name says, and it, repeat, it replaces it with a quote. And there's a bunch of quotes and they kind of cycle. So each day you get a new quote. Um, and here's kind of a link to the, the extension. So this is kind of, you know, when I break my rule and I open a Facebook in the middle of the day, I might want to chat with family or something like that, that I can still do, but I can't just scroll forever through the feed. Um, if I want to do that, I have to go on my phone. Uh, so that's the first extension. The second one is a similar concept, but for, for YouTube. So I'm a bit of an addict on YouTube. So to help my addiction, um, I installed this Chrome extension called DFTube, distraction free for YouTube. So if I now go in my YouTube, notice no homepage, um, and you know, if I go into subscriptions, so this is where I mainly consume my YouTube content now through subscriptions that still appears. But if I jump into a video, say this one, all right. you'll notice that I've also hidden all the recommendations. So essentially it forces me to only watch whatever's in my subscriptions, which would be kind of the content I'm interested in really. And it avoid, and it forces me to not spend hours just scrolling through um, random recommended content so it's like two little chrome extensions which can really help save you a lot of time if you're you know not disciplined like me and you find yourself you know just scrolling through you know video after video youtube you know spending a lot of time in the news feeds etc there's probably one for twitter as well um i'm not uh, familiar with it i don't really spend much time on twitter but that's just one that kind of comes to mind if you're talking about infinite feeds. The next Chrome extension that, I'm, to be honest, I'm not actually currently using, but it's one I have used in the past, is Block Site. Um, essentially, you just create a list of sites that you want to block. You turn it on. So I'm just going to turn mine on for a second. And if I, for example, do go to Facebook, it's just going to block me entirely. Um, Depending on what you're doing in your business and the sites you need, and you know, you might need to go to Facebook to, you know, post content in the Facebook groups, you know, so it kind of becomes a bit of a headache because you've got to turn it off, turn it back on. But if you really want to be aggressive and just turn off all the kind, all the sites you just waste a lot of time on, um, then block site would be the site I recommend the Chrome extension. I'd recommend to do that. Um, it's very effective uh, in preventing you from going to sites you don't want to be visiting. Um, but it can be a bit of a headache at times because there might be times you need to go in. So I use Facebook, for example, to communicate with friends and family primarily. So if I've got this on, then I've got to jump in here, turn it off, and then I might forget to turn it back on. And I haven't kind of solved that riddle entirely, but um, I still recommend Block Site. It's a really good tool. Now, the last extension I want to talk about is um, the Marinara Pomodoro Assistant. So if you've never heard of the Pomodoro technique, I recommend going and reading up on that. Um, it's essentially a system to uh, like a productivity system, I guess, where you set a, a period of time where you're going to do work and you're going to focus and do that work. And then after that time is, 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 is finished, then you're going to take a break. Um, and then you'll come back. So it's a way to kind of block off periods of time um, where you're working. And then when the timer, you know, is, is done, you kind of get up, you stretch uh, and you take a bit of a break. And I'm not using this Chrome extension at the moment. I do have it installed, but it's been very, very good uh, over, over the years. Um, once again, it depends a lot on the type of work you're doing. For me, I, I much prefer very long periods of focus time. Um, and therefore, it can kind of 
go work against me at times, but I do want to kind of show you how this works. So right now I have it custom set. If I remember to 45 minutes, you could set it to uh, the standard is 25 minutes. But if I just want to turn this on, I just got to click it once and you can see the timer starts 45 minute timer. So basically what's going to happen is I can now jump into a project. I can work and this will count down. And when it hits zero, it's going to give like, uh, there'll be like a bell will ring. And then I know, okay, the Pomodoro's done. I'll get up, I'll stretch, you know, go get another coffee or whatever. And then I'll just right click and go restart, start focusing. And then it starts again. Um, and it gives you history, which is kind of nice. So if you want to kind of track how many Pomodoros, you can see down here, it will track how many Pomodoros you do in, in certain periods of time. It's a pretty popular Chrome extension. I've tried a few of these Pomodoro type Chrome extensions. This is the best I've found. Uh, so it depends on the type of work you're doing. If you can afford to do, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, and then get up and take a break and then just repeat that and do a few of these, you know, each day, um, then, then I highly recommend this and that's it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.